Okay. How are you? How are you? Good, good, good. Can't complain. Doing well this evening. How's everybody else? Good. Glad to be here. <laughs> yes. Right. So, welcome back, everyone. Who were last time with us? Uh, uh, with the Germine for machine learning interview session. Uh, this time we are going to cover Python interview question and answer. And Germine have a great experience. He will share his uh, um, uh, experience and any kind of advice that would help you guys to crack the interview. Uh, unfortunately, as I said, I have somehow lost access to my presentation that I uh, was going through. Uh, I was going to present. So um, I'll just quickly walk through on the data circle, what data circle is about and what do we do? And then um, I'll give us, give me a five minutes and then we'll, Germain will take over and uh, we'll go from there. So data circle is basically, uh, men I started data circle um, as a meetup group and we kind of now, uh, 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 big group we we kind of organize different events like uh right now interview prep we have a uh, conference coming soon uh we have different uh clubs book reading clubs uh and other activities projects other activities all related to data science uh it's mainly focused on women and binary base but we welcome everyone so yeah thank you i appreciate everyone joining us today uh, the announcement is we have a conference coming next uh, next year in April. Uh, we are going to open soon for call, call for purpose, where uh, whoever wants to be a speaker uh, can submit their talk for, uh, we have three submissions, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and a workshop for 60 minutes. So uh, that's a small announcement uh, that we have a big uh, conference coming next year. Uh, we had really great success this year for that conference. We had like over 30, 300 participants for the conference. So we are uh, really looking forward to that as well. And yeah, uh, let me introduce to Germain. Sorry, Germain, again, I lost my uh, PowerPoint. I had a great introduction about you. So uh, no, that's we, can, we can do it. Uh, I'll say it, whatever. It's fine. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Um, so Germain will... Uh, help us uh, help us guide us or give his uh, insights for uh, any kind of questions you have for the interviews prep, interview prep he has a great experience uh germain um you maybe introduce about yourself i have lost the information but basically germain has a great experience he's been working in the it for over i think two decades now so mm -hmm. So he has really good experience about machine learning. Um, uh, uh, he's been leading the teams, he's been uh, leading the project. So um, we had a really great time last time too, Jeremy. We really appreciate your support and you, you know, sharing your uh, insight with her interviewer. Mm -hmm. Or not yeah. interviewer, uh, with her participant, sorry. So, okay, mm -hmm. I will now hand over to you, Jeremy, and uh, we can kick off this. Sure, sure, sure. Hey, everybody. Good evening. How are you all? Thank you for coming and listening to my spiel. <laughs> um, you know, we're going to just talk about like Python and, and just, you know, from, a, again, a conversational perspective, um, I think to make best use of the time, please feel free to add, if, even though I'm speaking, uh, you know, learn from everybody else and like to hear about everyone else's experiences. If, you know, if they're all working or looking for work or, you know, just the interest in data science. So like um I said earlier, I uh, um like Handy said, I'm Jermaine all good. I've been in the field for over two decades. I um work for quite a few companies in, in different areas, finance and in, in finance and software. That's because you know, I worked at Microsoft for a while. Uh, in here in Seattle, pretty much everyone at some point <laughs> will make the <laughs> to go to Microsoft and you know, or Amazon or Google, or whatever. Um so uh the yeah, finance uh healthcare and um software and um now um uh telecommunications um i currently work for a company that counts t-mobile as a client so i work indirectly for t-mobile on the um ai team there so we have a group um there uh, called social messaging and product development 
And so um, basically what we do is we just leverage, in short of it, we just leverage AI, deep learning, machine learning as needed to develop products uh, internally. Um, prior to that, I worked at a startup, did a similar thing. Um, wore many hats there as a, you get into a startup, you you know, you do a lot of different things. So um, there I, you know, built models, um, same thing, leverage AR practices to create products. But for the startup, we created products for sale to the public. Um, started working out with, um, uh, in a political space, the startup for Howard Schultz, who was running for president, you know, former CEO of Starbucks. He was running, you know, had a presidential run, short-lived presidential run, um, dropped out pretty much due to like health reasons and other things. And so we um, he created this startup and a few others to help with that. And so we, you know, grab data, we purchased um, data, political data, voter data, um, sensitive PII information, um, scrubbed it and used that to understand um, just the political process. We used uh, social media, Facebook, Twitter feeds, and, you know, just gained information that way to be used for marketing. So you had a marketing arm. And so based on our data, we would determine like what would be his um, best, um, his best use of his ad dollars for, you know, billboard or possibly TV spot or um, things like petitioning um, voters um, used also to inform kind of his campaign um, as far as like some political stances like anti-vax or, or pro-choice or pro-life, you know, things like that, you know, clean energy, green, you know, the, the whole climate change, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, it did work like that um, and, and other things. Um, I, I've been in the field a long time, so I had the benefit of working in different sectors and seeing how different, um, you know, how data is in the different sectors and also, um, you know, just how things work, operate, you know, the type of environments, you know, there on what actually happens versus what sometimes, you know, people maybe, you know, have a have a, a misconception about what actually goes on and what it means to be a data scientist slash data engineer. Um, so that that's pretty much me. In the, in the nutshell, um, yeah. So, uh, any questions, or do we want to? I have quite a few people, and do we want to go around and do short introductions, or, or what? We we could do that, I guess. Um, yeah, that would be nice if everyone can give a uh, short introduction about themselves. That will help uh, Jeremiah understand the background and answer the question appropriately. Yeah. All right. Um, Does anyone want to volunteer, or I'll. I can go ahead. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Hi, my name is Megan Stachura. Um, I'm an environmental data scientist at a small environmental consulting company. I have about 10 years of experience and um, just kind of in I think interested in growing my skills for future interviewing and job applications. Mm -hmm. Great, great. I think I'm, yeah. oh, I'm sorry if I. Yeah, sorry, I was in mute. Uh, so I'm Sandeep. I recently graduated uh, from a master's in business analytics program from UW. I'm um, currently working as a part time consultant at uh, Mil Milgut Center for Business Analytics, and I'm currently looking for a more full time job in data science. All right, we want to go next. Namita, I think you are going about to introduce yourself. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Namita. You got muted. We want to go next. Okay, there we That's go. Um, the meter got muted. Are we cut here? Yeah. Okay, I think, yeah. Should so, go hi. Again, yeah, hi everyone. My name is Namita. I'm a data scientist working at Pivico, and I want to transition to a full time uh, data scientist position. And uh, yeah, I'm interviewing. Um, I have interviews next week too. So. Yeah, looking oh. forward to your talk. <laughs> Yay, good luck. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Thank you. 
Um, Who uh, wanna go next, Jasim? Uh, am I pronouncing uh, I would, it correct? Yeah, I will go next. Um, hi everyone, my name is Jasim. Um, I recently did a six month boot camp in data analytics and currently working as a program coordinator in a college here in Seattle, but looking for a kind of like an entry level data analytics role. Thanks. And Justin. now we have Megan. Grannon, right? Grannon, yeah. yeah. Yeah, hi, I'm also Megan. Um, so yeah, I've been, um, I've gotten really interested in data science and data analytics. And then over the last year, I've just been learning as much as I can on my own. And I want to move into the field and see if I can get a kind of like maybe entry level analyst job at this point, if I'm ready for that. Um, and then I'm also looking into possibly getting like a master's. So I, I just want to learn more. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, who we did Pablo and Pablo. Hello, I am Pablo. I am a systems engineer. I, I've been learning data science and machine learning for about five years already. Never felt ready to start interviewing because I, I got lost in being kind of an expert on on statistics and probability, probabilities. Uh, I took this year in um, beginning of this year Udacity data science nano degree, and mm. it was a good experience. But it, I, I, I really didn't learn anything because I knew all of it. So that triggered me to say, okay, I'm ready. But then the pandemic came in, and lots of People lost their jobs, and I didn't want it to jump into looking for a new job as a data science. So now I am starting to think about that uh, I, into that path again. So that's why I'm here. Okay, great, great. Yeah, oh, who's next? Last, I think, is Semi. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm currently a student at uh, University of Michigan's uh, data science master's program, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, even though I've just started, I have a good solid background in SQL. I've done uh, pandas data engineering and cleaning quite a bit. That and visualization are my prime interests. And uh, one thing I think I've learned about the Seattle market is that it's all about the networking and not just applying. So I wanted to know what you all have to offer in terms of helping me do the networking through to get my resume in. Okay. Right. Oh. <laughs> well, oh, awesome. That's... You're at the right place. Yeah, you are good with uh, Hanny. In, in... Yeah. <laughs> Is that everybody? Somebody else has a call in user too, I think. I don't know if that person. Uh, it's, it says call in user too. So I think, I don't know. Is that everyone or that person? Uh, I think there's someone. Uh, yeah, call in user too. Uh, so... I... I am doing a two screen. It could be me, not sure. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, if there is anyone, uh, please unmute and let us know. If not, it, that could be me. Okay. Uh, I think I haven't introduced myself. I'll just quickly introduce myself. Uh, hello everyone, it's Honey Patel here. I work at the Microsoft as a consultant business uh, intelligent engineer. Uh, I'm still new to this fold. It's been a couple of years. Been working now. Right now, I'm mostly doing data analysis and engineering. Uh, I'm super interested uh, in machine learning and AI and improving my skill set in that. And I'm also volunteering for Data Circle. So yeah, uh, and I'm really glad you guys all join in. And Jermaine, really thankful that you are you know supporting this event. Yeah, thank you, thank you all, and thanks for having me again. Um. So um, let's talk. So uh, see here, we got a lot of different backgrounds, um, which is which is great because, like I said, we have this discussion. I learn from you guys too. Um, so this topic tonight, last week we talked about more about machine learning. This tonight, I think the topic is like Python. Um, so um, regarding Python, um, I, you know, I was thinking about this and wrote some things down, notes to talk about, but. 
really what is with Python is it, it's it's like the de facto language you use for data science, right? It has this application for, you know, at least I know I don't want to give a specific percentage, but it, it's definitely a need to know. Um, you know, because of its libraries and its history and its way mature and it, you know, it's it's just a great language. Um the other competing one was was R and R, but R has, you know, in my experience in talking to people and everything, R is really more so used in like academia and like in like um like life sciences, biosciences, because it has some great package as well that's more geared towards that. Um and, and it's an easy kind of thing because a uh, uh, easy transition because some people did them um, like SAS and stuff, you know, they can adapt to all, you know, it's a smoother transition. And this is, you know, what I was told and happened to be my experience and what I was told. So um but in regard to Python, there's a new version that came out 3.9. Now in trying to learn Python, um yeah, thanks. Um and, you know to learn Python, I wouldn't get caught up in trying to know the latest and greatest. Um, because even though 3.9 just came out maybe almost a month ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, prior to that was 3.8. And 3.8 was, um, that version, it wasn't too good because it, it broke a lot of packages, like a lot of current, you know, models and packages used. Um, it, it broke a lot of it because it just couldn't use it because that's some, the syntax and, and, you know, and you'll run into that too with different drivers and everything, but pretty much a stable one is like 3.7 and 3.6. So um, even though it's good to know if you just go to the Python site, um, it's, it's great to know to look up some of the new added features, but I wouldn't be like in a rush to know like the cutting edge of Python because, you know, you, you know, when you go in the in corporate or even if you, you know, you're going to corporate pretty much, you know, things don't change much. It's a huge overhaul, a lot of, you know, learning, it's a learning curve, it's cost factors that prohibit it. And so, you know, that I won't really get caught up on. So anyway, so going forward with that, um, you know, Python is the de facto standard. It would be great to learn. One of the best books I know for that is, is a book called Learn Python the Hard Way. There's a second edition that covers version 3.7, I believe. That's an excellent book because you you do wrote, uh, you know, coding over and over and over. It's one of the best books out there for just, if you're talking about Python. Um, if you want to learn, uh, if you're doing Python and you just want to dive in really and just get into the different, you know, functions in data science as far as like learning the algorithms, which is very key. You know, you, you got to know that um, in the scikit-learn packages, you know, that's like, you know, you should know that, that you have to know that. Um, there's a great, um, some resources, this guy, um, uh, I'm going to send you the link to it because I got some of his books. Um, uh, shoot, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on his name, but he has a, he has a medium blog. It's called machine learning mastery. And this guy is like, it's great. He has a bunch of books out there. They're PDFs you can get, you can download. Um, you can, you know, get them from his site, of course, and pay for them. But I'll tell you something. If you guys don't know, there is um, a site called zlib.org. I'm going to put it here in the chat. Zlib, uh, z-lib.org, right? Of course you want to you know, support people and buy their books. I do, but sometimes I, you know, I read the book first and evaluate it because I hate getting a book and, um, you know, and it's not what it is, you know, it's like you don't learn, you know, like Pablo, you had the experience. I'm pretty sure you went to the, um, the, what you did me, right? You said you went to and you did that and you just felt you did Udacity. Learn. Udacity. And you didn't Udacity, really learn yeah. much. You, you knew it already, but you still had to pay for that, you know? So it's like, um, you know, I, I hate that. And not even, even if you didn't pay for it, it's just the, the, your time, you know, you're investing to do something like that. Um, you gotta be aware. There's a lot of people out that, you know, say, oh, they're that scientists and such and such. And, you know, it, it's not really, you know, maybe not beneficial. You're not saying that's everyone's case, but that's what happens. Um, so yeah, so I put the link in the chat, zlob.org. You should check that out. Register a free account. You get to download 10 books a day, which is great. And like anything, like even like the newest books in PDF or um, you know, ebook format. What's that? Like uh, what is ebook or uh, format? You know, you 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 can read e EPUB. It's EPUB PDFs and EPUBs, and you can get like pretty much every book out there with zlog.org. I mean, brand new ones, 2020 editions you can grab. 
that's a really good resource. So to yeah, you know, that's great. Yeah, Z, yeah, you check it out. Go to the site. I'm telling you, it's, it's the absolute best. So um, yeah, machine learning mastery. I don't know why I keep drawing a blank on his name. J Jason. J something. Jason. I just checked Jason Brownlee. Uh, yeah, Brownlee. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason Brownlee. He, he's he's excellent. He has a medium page for that, and he sells these books. They're great. Um, so um, in regards to Python, yeah, you definitely have to know that. Um, when you know when you go and you're out looking for work, you know, uh, you know, these are some things you got to have. I think also which pays to learn. I, I you know, a couple of people said they were data engineers or data engineering. Um, that is a very excellent skill to have. You know, you know SQL, you know a couple of like, maybe one or two like NoSQL databases. That helps you tremendously because that separates you from everyone else. Some of the things you, you know, you you learn, uh, you have under your belt because everybody going for work is going to be, oh, I'm a data scientist. I know this, that, and the third. Um, so, you know, um, that that's a good way to separate or even break into a field. If you find a company and get a data engineering role, because you will be exposed to data scientists and data science, and then you can move into there, into a space there and stay or whatever. Um, another approach with um, Python is uh, of just period in your data science career is a startup. Startups are really good because, you know, it's like a, you know, all, it's just open, you know, they're welcome to the latest technologies, plenty open source cover the cost. So that's a good avenue there is, is targeting startups, you know? Um, of course, there's a risking that a risk in that because as much as you see startups being created and getting funded on on um, GeekWire, you know you see just as many. <laughs> Some of those like you know they ran out of funding or they they're closing. So you know it's just taking a chance to do it, and you but you get exposure to to a lot of the kind of work. And then also um, as a data scientist, you'll get a role as a data scientist, and you won't do. You, it's a possibility and it happens you 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 won't spend a lot of your time you know doing data science work like if you're just going in with the mindset oh i'm going to go in and get that science job and i'm going to do all this great stuff like i'm going to go in there with data and i'm going to build models and then i'm going to optimize models and then you know i'm going to have that on my resume you know that may take you know some time that's not the bulk of the work you do the bulk of it is cleaning data or assisting in creating you know machine learning pipelines you know so that you know, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, honey. Yeah, so then I have a question. Like, let's sure. say um, there are people, I think, different audience, some of them targeting data engineering jobs, some of them targeting data scientist job. What kind mm -hmm. of question, what kind of different question would be there, let's say, uh, based on Python, if I'm targeting data engineering versus data scientist job? If you're gonna go, you gotta learn. You gotta learn the algorithms. You gotta know that. That is key. Like you gotta know, cause the go ahead, Kenny. You wanna say something? Yeah, like how do um, cause Python is uh like really um, it's a it's a it's there are different libraries. There are diff a lot of stuff out there. It's open source. Un mm -hmm. Unlike SQL, like there is a path to follow for SQL. Like you know this, 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 and then. Uh, you have you know how to build the script uh, scripting not scripting like, what what is that um store procedure and stuff that's like okay then you pretty much know everything right. about SQL but Python there is a different path you could follow for you know doing data engineering and data scientist so like how do one follow or how do one know that I know enough to do data engineering or I know enough to do data science okay I'll answer that for you so with Python. When you go into data science, the first thing to do is start with learning the basic linear regression. That's first. Learn that first. Because that's just really simple. You know, that's when you, you know, linear regression is basically you have data and I mean, I'm trying, you have data and it forms a linear form. If I graph it and show you, it's going to come up. As a matter of fact, I think I have, I have my GitHub up and I'll show you just a sample notebook that I have and I'll share my screen. Where is that? That is, um, a real simple one here. Let me share my screen quickly with you all, and we could talk through this. I pulled up one of my old ones that I had. Um, share, share your screen and share. Share. All right. So this is really simple. This is, like I said, this is an old. Let me know if you all can see the screen. Yeah, we can see your screen. All right. This is just basic stuff, right? I'm gonna do that. So you want to learn linear regression, and that's simple. You have basically like two or more 
different features in a data set. So, you know, you have features and it's like, okay, like this one is a common one, the pizza price plotted against diameter. So you look at what you try to do is predict, you know, linear regression. You're trying to figure out, you know, if your prediction is correct or your th thesis, your theory is correct that, hey, you know, the larger the pizza is, the more it's going to increase in cost. So you get a data set, right? So you're going to learn, this is basically a basic linear regression problem. So you're going to need to know on Python, right? You're going to need to know the NumPy library, right? And this one here, NumPy, right? You got to know that. That, you got to know Pandas because Pandas is the data source. I mean, the data set. That's, you know, you format, you have what's called the data frame. And that's what Python uses to go to store data to, to um, look. A data frame is just basically like equivalent to like an Excel spreadsheet, right? It's like that, but different, has different functions you can do on it. You could do math on it and stuff. That's what NumPy is. NumPy is Python's math numerical, it's short for numerical pi, numerical Python. But that's where like a lot of your math functions are, where you have vectors, you know, you have like linear algebra in there. You use that. You have, um, you have, uh, what else do you have? Matrix, matrices. You have matrices in there. So you got to know that. So the packages you're going to know for Python, you got to know is, is, is those, those, it's actually four. But the fourth one is visualization and you can use different types of visualizations. There's a different one. It doesn't matter so much what you use there, but you got to know NumPy. You have to know pandas and you got to learn this, know the scikit-learn package. You got to know that. And so, and the scikit-learn is huge. You know, that's his, is both of that is data science. So a scientific pie, what that does is it uses the algorithms. That's the package that has all of the algorithms. NumPy has all of the numeric operations, like I said, vectors, matrices, and you know, matrix multiplication, you know, vector operations, you have that there. And then you have the um cycling has all the algorithms and pandas. Pandas is just basically the data frame. And so you want to be able to, you know, import your data, whether you pull it from a CSV or Excel or a JSON file, there are packages you use to go and import the data. And then once you do that, then it turns into a data frame. And then from there, you know, you go and do the operations. So this one's here. This is one of the old notebooks I have. I have several, but um, of course, and I'm going to share my link to my GitHub. But basically what this does is you just create an array, a NumPy array. Right, and you just put in, um, you know, some some numbers, some random numbers, six, eight, ten, fourteen, and then you have a command called reshape. Reshape just goes and it shapes your. Uh, let me explain it this way: you have a, an array, and you want to turn it into a vector. So the reshape command just formats it, so you have the rows and the columns. Because when you do matrix multiplication, you multiply a row. I don't know if you know about matrix multiplication. You gotta know some math operations, but basically. <laughs> To multiply, you multiply the rows and the columns times columns and rows. So the two middle, in order to multiply the two interior, like say if I have three rows and five columns, I will have to multiply five rows by three columns. So the two middle have to be the same value in order to do the multiplication. That's just, that's math. That's linear algebra math you got to know. But anyway, you have that. So you have that. Uh-oh. <laughs> So he's a kid. You have that on your x-axis here. They just taught x. That's your horizontal, right? This is your diameter in inches. Then you have your y, which is your vertical. And that's the prices of the, in this case of pizzas, right? Your prices. And so the fourth package I was talking about. So we got NumPy, we got Scikit, and we got Pandas. The fourth one is Matplotlib. This is a basic one. There are other visualizations out there you can use, but Matplotlib is the plotting library that gives you visualizations, which is very important because you got to know how to plot to see, you know, if you know you have a, a, a plot to see if it is linear. Your relationship is linear. You know, this first line here, your x, your size of the diameter and inches of the pizza versus the y, the price, you know, the cost, the cost. And so if you have a pizza that's, you know, like in this one, this is roughly on the x-axis here. I can make this bigger. I don't know if you can see that, right? This is roughly about six or seven inches right here. 
And so it's at a price of maybe $7. But as I go up the diameter of the pizza increases, you see the price increase. So if that keeps happening right there, you can actually like physically draw a line through there. And that is, you know, what you can say is a linear relationship, right? So that's some basics you got to know in Python about linear relationships. And linear relationships is just that it's usually like just basically like two features. There's a couple of other things we can talk about in Python, which we'll get to. But this is the basic thing you got to know. You got to start off with knowing your libraries I just mentioned. I, I won't repeat them again, but you guys got to just, I can put them in the chat um, here. Yeah, I think it's NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm going to put that in the chat. Great, thank you. And then yeah. I think Sandeep asked the question like, Sure. I'll read out loud. He, sure. He's asking what kind of questions can we expect in data analyst versus data engineer versus BI engineer versus data scientist engineering jobs? Okay. I think, I think um, this has just been my experience that data analysis and data, uh, I think BI engineer and data analyst would have kind of similar questions because bi also fall into bi and data analysts also fall into dealing with the business mm -hmm. but i think data engineer and data scientists would have more complex engineering kind of python questions where this kind of algorithms and there are so many algorithms and techniques that would uh, okay. get asked that's just been my experience or knowledge but how do you usually when of course when you perform different jobs what mm -hmm. kind of use methods would okay. help so you? all right i'll go one by one because i see the question up sandy that's a good question and and i you know when you're starting on the field you struggle with that you know you don't know what to go where to learn your approach to getting in there and what it is they require and it can be quite overwhelming so let me help you guys out there so the first one if you're a data analyst a data analyst basically is is visualization visualization in excel right so that's really just visualization of data analyst you'll get like a report you know, in that role, you get a report. So the business may come and say, hey, you know what? We want to create a dashboard, you know, using a tool like Tableau or something like Power BI, right? And they'll go and say, okay, we want to create a dashboard of this or we want some visualizations to show, you know, hey, we want to plot churn. Churn is like how many people, if you, if you have a service, like say you're going for a company like Amazon, right? And Amazon, you know, they, and you work in, they have a whole bunch of groups. Let's just say you work in a group of, um, let's say you work in uh, uh, Amazon Prime Video, right? I know I, I interviewed with there. I didn't get that position, but I interviewed there. So Amazon Prime Video, what they do is they want to look at people who sign up to subscribe and how they, and you know, if they stay subscribed to Prime Video. And they want to see how many people are li leaving. And so what they want to do is form like a, they want to form a baseline. So what you plot churn is when you're starting off as a business and you're trying to plot that churn, you want to be able to visualize. This is what a data analyst can do. They can do reports that show churn. So when you first introduce a product, you know, you're going to be at your highest, right? Going up, right? Amazon Prime Video in this example. When they first introduced Prime Video was a new thing. Everybody wanted to get it. Like, oh, shoot, you know, we got, you know, streaming video with all these great movies, everything like that I could watch. So, you know, let's say they first, and let's say a million people signed up in the first month then at the second month it'll just start to drop a little bit you know as far as new subscribers right new subscribers you're looking at new subscribers you have a million new subscribers then the next month you may have seven hundred thousand subscribers then five hundred thousand subscribers right each month you know you plot by the month and so we, what you're hoping is that you want to get to a place where it stops and levels off let's say they know now they level off and they look at a trend of six months and they level off at a roughly 500 subscribers every month new subscribers every month so if they get 500 subscribers every month and, it, and they can track that and it kind of levels out at that point that's their baseline so now i help them predict how much money to spend to amazon prime video or if they need to um, add more content or things like that and at the end of the day they can know if they can plot a year or two out based on that, how much revenue they be able to generate? Can somebody mute, please? Somebody is is is, is um, not muted and is kind of 
So uh, thank you so much. So I, I hope you guys were able to hear that. So you have that. So that's what a data analyst will do. They're going to get rep data analyst gets reports and they'll plot data, visualize that. That's what the analyst is. They analyze the data, right? So they do that. Now next, a data engineer. A data engineer, um, usually in the realm of data science, they create like really like the data pipeline. They may do some data science, science, you know, as far as like helping to, you know, maybe clean the data and sanitize data. You know, a data engineer can do that. But a data engineer is basically like the back end stuff. They they know SQL or no SQL. You know, they're familiar with the cloud, you know, whether it's Azure, AWS. And then they may be caught on to help build like a pipeline to help data scientists to system, you know, data ingestion. So data ingestion from different sources that come in and then they build a pipeline. Like for instance, a lot of times you go to data science job, but you do engineering, you do a lot of engineering. So don't be dismayed by that, you know, or don't get caught up in so much the title of I'm a data scientist. Um, some, a lot of times you have to do that, you know, you have to, you know, wear your data engineer hat or as a data engineer, you do some preliminary data science. Like I said, cleaning the data, um, plotting data like this notebook does. So that's the data engineer. They pretty much do like the infrastructure. So they'll help data scientists by and getting data ingested from different sources. You may have different, um, in, in corporate, you have different, um, groups, you know, business units, right? You have different groups. You're going to have sales. You're going to have marketing. You're going to have the project managers. You're going to have the product managers. And they all may store data differently. But as a data scientist, you have to, scientists, you got to consume the data and give them pertinent information about that. You have to keep models and able be able to predict things, you know, and that's really the job you do or create products like what I do at T-Mobile. So um, for T-Mobile. So that's the data engineer. That's the difference there. Now, a business intelligence engineer, they basically use a product. So they'll have to have some SQL knowledge as well or no SQL. And then what they do is they do things like use um, what's called ETL processes, extract, transform, and load. So they'll be more familiar with things like um, SQLs, um, Microsoft SQLs, um, S, S, their, their suite, SRSS. That's their SQL reporting service server, something like that is called. But they'll do stuff like that, like ETL jobs. Basically, you get you pull data in and just it, then you transform it to put it in a format, and then you store the data, you archive it. And then from there, you know, and it's not real-time data, it's it's um historic data, and you're able to use that, and then you know, the business may ask you for you know trends or something like that, or historical data. Hey, in in uh last year in 2019, you know. In the last six months of 2019, let's say that's June to December, you know, how many widgets did we sell or such and such like that? you will be able to do that. You know, again, you it, and some of these things have overlaps these positions, but that's what you'll be able to do there. You'll be able to say, okay, well, I can use a Tableau or or a um, Power BI or something like that. And I do ETL. You may be called on to do some visualization like an analyst. You know, you may have to, you know, do that as well. But that's really business intelligence. They they do ETL and they know about like data lakes, you know, different ways to store data. You know, you have data lakes, you have um uh uh you gotta know different topologies, you know. Um like um like for SQL, you have star topology, you got the uh snowflake, you know, topology. Those are like um ways, those are frameworks for like SQL. Basically, you know, how that is, is stored in the tables and stuff like that. And then rules as far as like, you know, restrictions on the actual SQL data. Like one of the things is with a table, you know, you can't have more than one value in the table, right? You have to have that. You you configure the database to say, okay, well, you know, you create like the the, the primary key for it, you know, or indexing, you know, you do optimization and stuff. That's business intelligence. And then the last one, data science, machine learning engineer. So, and that's even more like, it's really, really broad, you know, it's really broad, but basically a data scientist has to know different subjects and pull it all together. They are able to do all the different jobs you mentioned. They, they're able to do data analytics. They're able to do engineering. They'll know the back end. We'll know, um, you know, the algorithms you use to, like in this notebook I'm sharing on the screen, you know, the different algorithms. You got to know linear algebra. You know, you got to know the back end. You got to know the cloud. So you got to pretty much know all of these roles. And that's really what a data scientist really is. And there's a chart that shows that I could put, I got that on my GitHub. I could post that link to that. And I could put it in a link too. 
but it's a chart that this guy created and it's like the roadmap to data science and it's old it's a few years old but it's still very relevant i'll find out and share that so i know that was a lot but i hope i answered your question sandeep and um yeah um any other questions or anything i could look in here hello yeah oh, we can hear okay. you okay so I hope I hope I, I talk and I hope you're able to get notes and get an understanding. I hope that was clear, you know, what I what I said. You know, it's a really great question, you know, a really, really great question. Um, any other questions we have? I see something in uh what is that? Nope. Oh, you lost my video. Oh, all right. I'm sorry. I'll stop sharing and reshare. Um, any no more questions? I I talk uh whatever. Anybody has anything? I have a question. Uh, so, in an interview setting, uh, to to what level are you expect to to do NumPy, Pandas, and and, and Scikit-Learn to those libraries? Because I know them, for example, but I don't know all the parameters that an algorithm has. But I go and I Google and and, and I go to Scikit-Learn and I, I I read the documentation and I put that in my grid search. Mm -hmm. for, for 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 grid search to find me the best parameters and I play with it. So in a in a in an interview setting, do they do make you uh, I don't know? Tell me how do you do H, H, X and Y in pandas and whiteboard or kind of they, that thing or or it doesn't exist in in data science interviews. No, in the data science interview interviews I've had I've had them interview at Microsoft too, like years back, just like you when I was first starting in the field and. And I know people there, one of the guys I know, um, two guys I know who are no longer there, but they moved. Um, one actually teaches data science. He's a interim professor at UW. Can you hear me? Because I think my video froze. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Okay, just the okay. video. Yes. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, as long as you can hear me, that's fine. Um, so my friend, uh, Val, he was uh, um, uh, he worked at Microsoft high up there, and he's an interim uh, professor at UW. Another guy... Um, uh denny who is um he he works he's high up in um uh data bricks uh, uh denny uh he's great guy denny so just from them and talking to them and interviewing myself there they they won't actually really like you know i may be in a the startup the world but in corporate they they assume you know that kind of stuff but what they're really going to harp on is the algorithms they go want to know what algorithms we use and they want not going to know like what but they're going to want, want to know why or how to apply these things to a certain problem. So they'll give you like a problem. They'll go, oh, they'll tell you a problem. They'll discuss something with you. That, hey, look, this is a problem here we have in here. Sometimes it's real. They'll give you like a real problem they're working on that they're trying to figure out, you know, and it used to be based on like the team you work on, like the team that they have you in mind for. They actually, look, we have this problem. How are you going to solve it using this? And they'll give you the information. So what you have to do is you won't have to like do like X and Y and be particular, but you got to have an idea and you're allowed to use pseudocode too. So don't be ashamed of that. It's great to like write out stuff and use pseudocode. Don't worry about so much the particulars, but you gotta have just knowledge of the libraries. Like they may ask, okay, for instance, the difference between a linear regression and logical regression, logistic regression, simple logical regression, linear regression has to line up. It's usually two features or slight, could be more, but you just have an outcome. It's binary outcome. Yes. Okay. I think we have lots here, audio, Jermaine. Can you still hear us? Oh, looks like uh, we have... Looks, looks like he dropped. He dropped, yeah. Completely, yes. Uh, he already joined, hopefully. <laughs> call on me, uh, just ping him. Make sure, uh, just give me a sec.
Okay, meanwhile, when we wait for Jermaine to join in, uh, does anyone has any, uh, un, any question that uh, we can discuss as a group? I actually yeah. have one. Great. So I'm wondering if anyone, um, I just haven't looked into this much to be honest with you, so there may be obvious answers, but um, I'm wondering if anyone has any really good resources that they recommend for um, kind of like a bank of different interview questions of what to expect or any good resources to learn about that for the technical interview. Uh, I'm sorry, I dropped, I don't know how much you heard or where I dropped from, sorry about that. No worries, Jermaine. We are glad you're back. And we were um, just discussing, uh, or Megan just had a question about, um, so not a question, just she's asking uh, if there is any suggestions that um, that you have to uh, study interview, um, interview question answer. It, it 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 really depends on where are you going for like the the, the you know the big one you trying to go to like google fang what they call it, facebook you know amazon google you trying to go for those or what oh personally no i was just asking in general but i guess if you could just share what you what you want to about the topic okay um uh, I, I got cut off. I don't know how much you're, but I was just talking about the different interviews i've been to and what i find that's kind of common between them um, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, um, they, the question that came about when I cut off was like from Pablo and he was asking about specifics, like how, what questions they ask or what they ask you so much about the details about the X and Y and stuff like that. And I'm saying, no, they, they won't ask you that. They just want to know your broad knowledge because you can use a bunch of different tools for a data science period. Of course, you got to know Python though, because that's what everybody understands. Mm -hmm. There are instances where people use different languages. Like I work at T-Mobile and the data scientists, some of them, they like to use Java because currently there's a Java framework. They use Java for data science. It actually has parallelism and it's faster than Python is. But, you know, Python has this tremendous library. Mm -hmm. Java does too, but Python is just the standard and everybody's familiar with that. So you can use pretty much a tool. But as far as questions and interviews and what you need to know, I wouldn't worry so much about, like online people, there's a book called um, Cracking the Programming Code or whatever. It's a green book that everybody uses, right? I wouldn't worry about those books. I won't worry about trying to get things to crack our interview. That That's not gonna serve you well. And that's been my experience too. Um, the, the thing to do is just really know the basic stuff, like your algorithms. There's really five of them that you should know that you got to know logistic and linear regression. You got to know K nearest neighbors, K clustering, and you got to know random forest. You'll get, qu and I'll put yes. those in, in there, in the chat, random, for, I'll put those in the chat too, as I'm talking. But, um, those are things they're going to ask about that because you got to know about those those, those, because that's what's used. That's really what's used, right? Those five, some mix of those, right? So you got to know that. So I would just, just own my skills and learn that. Linear regression, logistic regression, k nearest neighbor, k clustering, random forest, and um, SVM also. Know those and you'll be good because you get questions about that. And, you know, I, it's a whole bunch of different ones, but I won't worry about any of the other ones, the, those. But no, it don't don't go in with the mindset. I'm going to hack it, or I'm going to look at you know a person who's there, and mm -hmm. they're going to tell you exactly how to answer. Amazon and all these companies are all hip to that. They know that people are out there doing that. They know that, so they're not looking for that. And they also change, even though they, particularly Amazon, they'll know their um that everybody knows the twelve principles and the way there's like eleven to twelve principles you have to know, but you're not going to list them out and say, oh, I know. Principle number one and principle number two. No, you got it in your speech and your experience or what you <laughs> learn in your learning journey. You got to incorporate those things. And there's, you know, ways to do that. Just conversational. So that's that's what I would learn. I would definitely know that. And from there, you could just, you know, just going into an interview, just be confident and, um, you know, um, you know, just just handle it. Like they know, they know you're kind of nervous. They know things that happen. And they try to make it comfortable. Like I don't know if you guys got cut off, but I was talking about Facebook quickly. Facebook, um, 
Facebook interview, you got to know their the principles. They're going to give you all of that information. You're going to have weeks to study and look it over. And then they call you for the interview. They're going to ask you what language you prefer. And you're going to have someone on the phone with a white, you know, virtual kind of whiteboard. And they're going to ask you, they're going to ask you this basic SQL command. They're not going to go, depending on the job. I went for a data engineering job. And I also went for a data science job. And it's pretty much the same. And it gets progressively more challenging. But if you know those things, these algorithms I just mentioned to you, you'll be good. You, you'll be good there and you, you'll do well. So, you know, I will worry about it. Also, you, you talked a, a little bit about SQL. And I, three years ago, I, I was working in Amazon as a, as a support engineer in AWS on, on S3. And in there is where I learned a lot about uh, Spark, Athena, and all these big data tools that have helped me in, in my current job now. But in that time, I tried to move to a business intelligence role. And in Amazon, I in, in interviewed internally with hiring managers. And always I was discouraged because they told me, if you don't code at the level of a software engineer and you are not an expert in SQL, you have no chances on BI roles. And I asked them, how do you, what level of expertise do you mean in SQL? And they told me, uh, hackers rank, you have to do the hardest to be able to, to, to get the job. Is that True a, for a data scientist as well, or for data science, you have to go to the medium level, let's say, in, in, in SQL or, or in proficiency on those, on those things. Um, you Wait, first of all, who told you that? Somebody that actually works there, a hiring manager? Uh, yes, yes, yes. A hiring manager for a BI business intelligence in, in, in Amazon. I, 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 I pin him. I said, you have an opening. I am interested. I know SQL, but I don't work on it every day. I code, but not at a software engineer level. So I read your position and I match. And we start talking about it. And he told me that for getting that type of role, if I don't code at, at an SDE level, which unit testing, object oriented, if you don't know, he told me algorithms left and right. So because he told me, I'm going to give you the, 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 on a whiteboard and I'm going to grill you on, 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 on coding. Because um, he told me BI role is, is more is more complex because you are a data science and a data engineer kind of the you have to do the both roles. I'll I'll jump in really quick. Sorry, Jermaine, before you answer. Like yeah. I had a kind of opposite experience compared to Pablo. I think it depends on what level you were applying for BI engineer. Uh, I was just applying for the initial level, but they told me that I am more suitable suitable for a technical team. So I had like op opposite experience opposite. than what you had. So I think it, I don't know what level you were playing, but, but um, I was, I was going for an L5 BI. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, Jermaine, sorry. I just want to give you my insight. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, well, let me show you, let me say this one. Amazon is really broad. I don't know who told you that. Um, I don't know. I, I know quite a bit of people work there. And yes, you have to be definitely skillful, but not to that degree. And it depends on the group and the manager. I know that, um, and I don't know what the purpose of the person was telling you that. And I know people who have been there for a while. And I know people who are in, um, you know, um, positions like, you know, mid-management and upward positions. And I interviewed there like four times. And I didn't have that experience at all. I don't know why the person mm -hmm. said that. Maybe it's just that particular group. You know, Amazon, you got to look at them as like, um, and I don't want to go too much, so much into Amazon itself, but, you know, but Amazon, they are a company, they're like a bunch of smaller companies under an umbrella. That's how they all yeah, operate. Yeah. They're all separate, right? So yeah. one person, yes. you know, can give you something. I don't know if that person is trying to be intimidated or not. I would definitely get a second opinion. But even for mm -hmm. me, I don't know what level it is or what, but that that that's not a, a BI. And and I know data scientist positions, 
they'll put out that title out there to get you hooked so they can get candidates, not Amazon, but I'm just saying generally speaking. And when you look at the description, it's different, different things. So you got to be careful there. But that was never my experience. And anybody who I know, because I've asked before I even went to interview, and I know people, quite a few people there, that was just not the experience. They don't try to make it difficult or so challenging. Yes, they want the best and the brightest, but not where you got to be hacker rank or you got to be in a... um. Mm -hmm. What's the the a Kaggle, you know, be high ranking in the Kaggle competitions, you know what I mean? Like number two or number one. I mean, come on, that that's overkill. They're not gonna find that person. That person mm -hmm. doesn't exist. But you gotta have a propensity that you can learn. I think you did good with saying that, you know, you you're you're being honest with y'all and you have a willingness to learn. And that goes a long way. And not just Amazon, that's any place. That goes a long way. You have a propensity to want to learn, you know, because they, they'll they teach you and they're really kind. They're not trying to dissuade you from going. They want you to be there. They, it takes them a lot of time to try to organize and get six people for the loop all on the same schedule to be there for four, five, six hours, depending. So they're not going to do that to dissuade you from that. So that's all. I, I That's just my mm -hmm. opinion that I know. So I would ask in a different group, or get a second opinion there. You know what I mean? I, I just would, so. Okay. Right. But, um, yeah. I think uh, I, I I agree. Um, I had interviewed two, two different team and depends what they are looking for. Some of them want technical person to take over ETL jobs for be an engineer, but mostly it's just um, um, not like high level SQL, I guess. Yeah, because uh, in, in, in there, for data science was kind of forbidden because they, they require PhD up for their roles in, in, in data science if you go to and read their job descriptions. I don't know if they are finding them <laughs> because there's not too many that <laughs> was a PhD in data science. That's true. That's true. Um, okay, I think it's 6 30. Uh, we didn't do breakout session last time, Jermaine, but I think we have enough people this time. Uh, and we that would give uh, everyone to kind of do networking and ask any question uh, in person, just get to know each other. Uh, um, does anyone, anyone has any more question or we can do breakout session for 20, 20 minutes and we'll all uh, come back to jump, come back to uh, the meeting around 6.50. Excuse me. Uh, I just have a quick question. Um, so, uh, with data challenges, sometimes we get data challenges and writing code in Python. So, usually, um, what do they expect or um, how to approach those? Sure. Um, data challenges. Well, okay, I could tell you just with the Python or in just corporate period. A lot of data challenges that come about are different data sources. So, you know, you're going to have different formats of data and you're never going to get clean data like you have in the tutorials. It's always going to be, you know, different formats. You can have JSON files or CSVs or Excels and you got to cobble that. Then you got to look at the data, make sure it's useful. You got to do a lot of cleaning of the data. You got to sanitize it, meaning that you got to get into the format where you can actually glean information from it. And um, so that's just from a technical standpoint, problems you're going to see. And then with data science, it's not a, a cut and dry. Like nobody could tell you like, okay, this, you know, without knowing, understanding the problem and first digging into it, you can't say, oh, I'm going to use random, I'm just going to use random forest, you know, as an algorithm to try to do predictions or whatever, right? Or and graph the data. That just doesn't happen. What you got to do is your approach is you got to try quite a few of them related to the problem that you have and see which one gives you the best output, which is going to give you the, you know, and then when you're looking at building a model and get an output, there's three different things you look for. There's accuracy, there's precision, and there's recall. And they have different use cases, right? So if you're looking at, like, if I'm doing medical, if I'm doing medical imaging or something, right, and I'm trying to predict, um, you know, I'm trying to just, you know, predict like, okay, if this is a person that is, you know, you get photographs, you get medical imaging, right? And you have a photograph of a, a cancerous cell versus a non-cancerous cell, 
Well, there you really want accuracy because that's, you know, definitely, you know, you want to be able to predict within, you know, a certain confidence that, it, you know, your prediction is cancerous versus non-cancerous. Then you got like, um, so that's accuracy. Then you got precision. You know, that's like more like a probability problem. You know, that's precision because you want to be able to predict with, you know, like, for instance, something like fraud. You know, that's like a logistic problem because you're looking at a percentage. What's the possibility of these transactions being fraudulent? Right. And so you want to look at that based on a bunch of different features, a person's history versus payment history, the credit score, if they pay the bills on time, stuff like that. So you, you, it's no one size fit all. You got to really like understand the problem and jobs are going to ask you that. They're going to give you a problem when you interview. They're going to give you a problem and they're going to want you to solve it. And they're not going to be really caring too much about the particulars. They want to know just what like your solution is, your method of coming with it and what solution you're going to do. So, you know, now there are some things like as far as like, and I didn't even get into deep learning, which is a different subset. And we don't have time for that. That could be another talk or something. But basically you want to... um. Yeah, that's that's what, what you have to do. You got to have an understanding of the problem to solve it. And you got to just, that's why I said those five algorithms and stuff, you got to know that and how to use those. But, you know, when you're building a model, you get the data cleaned and you run it through, you, you create code that goes in and it tests each one. And you look at the output and see which gives you the best output. And things you want to look at, problems with that you're going to have or things you want to really look at or, you know, do I care about, how long the algorithm took to give me the prediction, you know, or do I care about how accurate it is? And then there's trade-offs. So there's like accuracy versus time it took, you know, depending on the problem, you know, the business system might care about time. If it takes like eight hours to run it versus four hours, but I'm doing eight hours and I'm getting like 98% accuracy, you know, versus, you know, half of that, but I'm getting 80% accuracy, there's trade-offs there. So it's not cut and dry. That's why you got to use the different, um, you know, you got to know the algorithms. The five I mentioned are a good start, and you can learn others, but you got to know those. And you can put those in a in a in a notebook, and you know, fit you know to try to predict with using each of them and graph it so you get the output of those, or just print out the output of those, and you know, you go from there. You know, so that's what it is. And you got to know that business. They always looking for costs. They always are looking to save money. So if it's going to require more cloud resources or something, you know that could be a factor, you know, or if they're crunched for time, they may be willing to say, hey, you know, I'll do 89% accuracy, but I need this done like by, you know, by two sprints, you know, and sprint, that's, you know, that's, um, you know, agile, you know, usually you operate in two week sprints, two week time periods. So, you know, that, that, that's what that is. Those are some of the issues you're going to see. Those are what you're going to look for. They're going to ask you about that. You know, what do you think is the best option, you know, given this problem, you know, time or accuracy or what? And they'll guide you and help you with that, too, you know, but they want to see your thought process. Know that um, you're going to have optimization. So you may look at an algorithm you like and you may have to do some optimization, know some optimization techniques for that. And it, it just has to do with the way you're doing data. It, it's things with like batching. There's other mechanisms called batching where you don't put the whole model in, but you do. You break the model into subsets, and that way it, it predicts, you know, the sets and it comes together. Um, one of the things is, and two major problems I should say, basic. You got to know this is overfitting, underfitting. You you got to know that overfitting is when you know you it, you don't give it enough information to make a difference because you have a training set and you got your test set. Right. Your training set is the bulk of the data that you train on. You give it a label. You give it the answers basically to, you know, to it. And then your test set, you pick a small subset out of that bigger data set. You split it up and then you like, OK, let's back up. You have a data, 100 percent of data. You have a You have a training set. You say like 80 percent of it used to train on. That means you give it the answers like, I, you know, when it looks like this, it should be yes or no. It should be, you know, uh, um, false or true. Let's just say, for instance, right? 30% of that uses test. So you train it and now the machine has knowledge of it. It knows, okay, this is what this looks like. Now, based on the test, it should be able to predict whether something is true or false. But the test data, if the data is too normal and it's not variances for it to give it a test, it'll overfit. It'll come out and say, oh, I predicted with like 99% accuracy. You know, that, that can be problematic there. The opposite is underfitting. Underfitting is when you have um uh underfitting is when you you know you give it 
Am I got it backwards or right? No, undefinite is when it's too much and it's too complicated, it's too complex for it to understand, you know, if I'm right or wrong. And you start seeing your your training set may be good, but your test set will be terrible. Um, so you know, you got um you have that. So you gotta get understanding of overfitting and underfitting. Those are two principles you have. So, you know, that that's base when you ask problems, right? So if I go down the lesson and put in this chat, you're gonna need to understand overfitting, uh, underfitting, and um uh algorithms. Algorithm. I'm gonna I'm putting that in the chat here. Performance. And that is three things. That is accuracy, precision, recall. I'm typing as I'm talking and F1, right? So that's for F1 is a combination of of um precision and recall, and it splits the difference to give you the, the best, you know, optimal solution with a combination of those. That's in the chat. So problems in short is that right there. Undefined, overfit, and algorithm performance. Those are the three basic things you gotta know. And you can read about that and um, you know, understand. And it's it's a really simple concept, and you can see it when you um, you can graph it to get a you know a, a, an idea about that. So I hope that answers your question, Amita. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, okay, okay. Um, somebody says there any links for datathons? I just is, um, I you know, nice. okay. Um, not the, I don't know. I know. Um, you know, there's a, a video. Um, let me put that there. They they always have these competitions, analytics, right? Dot com. Let me show I spelled that right. This this person you talk about that, and you want prizes. You know they they based in India because a lot of the prize money is based in like um, rupees. I want to say it's like R. What's the the dollars? Is you know the currency there is R. Yeah, yeah. that's rupees. Yeah, video um in uh. That is a good site, and they 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 always this full of um, it's full of uh, uh um com they always have competitions out there. Let me get the site video analytics. I think that's there's there's, there's a group, analytics video. There's a group, to, there's a group to call machine learning Tokyo. They mm -hmm. do some uh, exploratory data analysis challenges every two weeks. But I haven't participated because it's an, they are based in Europe and on, of course, on Japan. So it happens very late at night here or very mm -hmm. early in the mornings. Mm -hmm. But they do that and they I advise that on a Slack channel that they have. So you can go and, and grab the data set from Kaggle and start playing with it. And on the Slack, you can ask questions if you, if, if you want. But um, I haven't participated because I cannot do it real time with them in, in, in there. So. But that's another 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 resource if you want to start getting into 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 analyzing data sets. Yeah. Um, right. I think that participating in data tons actually helped me a lot. Like even if you are a beginner, um, you can participate because you work in a group and you'll have all sets of uh you have different kind of people. We have those have a uh, different skill sets. They'll be put you in a group, so you basically can discuss the ideas and learn from others. And even if you don't win, you of course learn, uh, and you get to do real time task. Uh, working on the I just participated in um, COVID related projects, so you get to work um, work on the real time projects and do a real time uh, data analysis or data engineering stuff. So that that actually helps for helps you to, you know, answer the interior questions. And not just that, I think it, it did also help me, you know, um, like what do you do outside of your work, you know? So that's what I do. This is, and you can update your LinkedIn accordingly. And that, that would just help you to keep yourself updated. And, you know, you can also update your GitHub based on what the task you have performed and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 good. What I want to say though, especially when you're starting out too, I do want to say like don't don't like I know there's Kaggle and there's um the 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 um some of the competitions. Some of them like especially if you start down can be really daunting because there's people in there who've been doing this for like years and also 
they've been doing it and they they kind of know they run through a circuit and do it also you got people who um like they'll have rules that'll say like okay you only have like a team of one person or maybe you know two people and some a lot of times some, they'll like break rules like they'll get like a group and they'll pull their solutions together and they rank you know then they'll rank high because they're like using multiple people doing you know the solution i know one of the big things was a, a algorithm called xg boost and um you know that's like a, a it's like a tree like a tree um algorithm that was popular because it it um you were able to build models and you were able to um you know come up with outputs really fast accuracy and everything like really fast but um those things would be really daunting i know I, I saw that out there and it, it, it sometimes it can really be discouraging because when you look at people who constantly rank one and you hear that they oh they've been doing this for like 20 years and that's impossible like i've been in a field 20 years i haven't done data science I only done data science for maybe the last five years or so you know because one somebody who's going to come and say they have 10 years experience data science you know i don't know about that like oh as far as like you know what is considered data science i mean it could be possible but you know people sometimes I, they just say these things but you know so just take it with a grain of salt i'm not saying it's not true but just take it with a grain of salt but especially if you're you know junior level or entry level they, they can be they could be they could be um they could be really really uh daunting you know and so um you know and so like um yeah that's it i i would i would go and do what i was telling you guys to do they learn python but even with python you don't have to know like every single thing because there's a bunch of libraries start looking at just data science like notebooks just look at notebooks like the machine learning mastery is a great place especially you're starting out because it's at a pace where you can understand there's notebooks I would go in and, you know, when I pull a notebook up, I wouldn't copy and paste it, type it all out because your the muscle memory, you understand it. And this guy, Jason, um, wrote, uh, wrote, wrote, wrote uh, I'm sorry, I'm keep drawing a blank, but Machine Learning Mastery, the guy we talked about before is really good. Um, I would learn those five algorithms. I would start with that. There's a, there's, you know, people will tell you there's a bunch of stuff you got to learn, but I'm telling you from corporate, from things I've read, I've, I've ran into the same problem some years back, and it was really overwhelming to me, all of the resources and all the things it's telling you to do. Do a Kaggle competition because that'll help you get a job and companies are looking, they want, they only want to hire people who are number one and all of this stuff like that. And that's not accurate. So don't be daunted if you're trying to go for a position like you were saying, Pablo. I get a second opinion. Don't and then also apply. Apply for the jobs because you'll learn. You know, fix your resume up, put your GitHub going, and look at these these five algorithms or so, and then go from there. So you have a basic level and go to interviews if you can get them. Try them, even if you don't get the job. That's how you're gonna learn. You, you're going to learn. You're going to know what they're asking. You're going to be able to compare notes like, hey, you know, I know this is, you know, this this is what's going on. And another approach, like I said, go the data engineering route because data engineering, you are going to work with data scientists because you're creating the back end and supplying the data to the data scientists. So you're going to get exposure there, right? Even if you may not get the position, you, you're working so closely with them, you pick their brain and get information from them. You know, that's another approach. And then, you know, move on. And then, you know, eventually try to get in that team or, or something. Um, um, what else? I, my suggestion too is um with 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 um with your job searches, um, just continue to network channels like this. Um, talk to people. Um, Medium always has great articles, you know, out there for people. Um, you have that, and I gave you that resource, Z Lob. So Maybe you don't have to spend a bunch of money on books. You can go and download the books and look at them and read them and work at them and see which ones you like, you know, so you're not spending bunches of money on books recommended. I know a lot of the books that I, you know, that's out there, some of them, I find that they have, some of them have like, um, you know, two or 300 pages and they don't really, you know, it, it doesn't teach you the theory behind it. They'll give you a lot of code and you just be copying code, but you don't understand the theory behind it. And that's, would it trip you up in an interview? Because unless you know the theory, once you know the theory behind it, you know how to apply it to problems. And keep really keep that in mind when you're out there looking for work. People don't care if you were number one or number 100 on a Kaggle competition. They want to know, because there's people who've done that and they get in the job and don't get the job because they don't understand the problem. You're not using data science in the corporation to get a job to 
you know, for as an ego, like, oh, I'm this data scientist. I could put that on my LinkedIn on my resume. They don't care about that. They want to know, can you solve the problem? They don't care about the technology. They got to interview you with using Python and languages just to see what you know. But once you get in there, you, you'll be in there. You'll be like, wait a minute. They probably don't even use Python, you know, or they may be a tool you can use, but they're Java based because they'd be a web company. So everybody uses, you know, React in Java. So, you know, um, you know, that is that. Know, know some cloud, but keep, um, you know, that's, that's what, um, yeah, let me leave my email too. That's what I would do. You really focus on learning what the things I've told you and you learn from this this group and um, learn how to apply it to problems. They don't care if you know all the ins and outs of the math about random forest or SVM or any of that. How can you solve my problem? Period. That's it. How can you add value by solving our problem? You know, they, they'll rather get you in and, and you can learn that as you on the job but they want to know how you can demonstrate that you add in value, not just being a big brain and you just know all of the Python methods backwards and forwards. And you've been in the hundred Kaggle competitions and video analytics competitions and stuff It's good, but you know, that's, that's what it is. Uh, any, any other questions or any, I know we're supposed to break out or something, but Hi. we end up kept going. <laughs> No worries. That's a great insight. I really appreciate that. Uh, I think there is someone uh, see me is asking, uh, is there a place I can look up for startups looking for data engineers? I am really keen to work in one, even if it is an internship. I just I just put it in the chat. There is a great site. Um, I, but yeah, I don't know where you all are. Well, now I, I'm in this. I'm in Olympia, which is in south of Washington, where the capital is. And basically, I just say Seattle. I'm 60 miles south of Seattle. So, um, Seattle. I, anybody outside of Washington here? In, in, in yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. I know. Well, this is what I do say now. So we're in a unique situation that we have that we're in um, COVID. So everybody's working from home, like jobs all over saying, hey, you're remote, at least until, you know, COVID ends. And then we are in the second, third or whatever wave in the COVID. So it, people are not going into the office for a long time. Trust, they, they're not going. I'm working and, you know, it's like, oh, we were going January. Now it's like, well, maybe June of next year. So that's that. But there is um this site is called Built in Seattle. But even though mm -hmm. Built in Seattle is really a great site because they have really if go check it out, they have categories of the jobs. Like if you're a data engineer, data scientist, machine learning engineer, or or, or deep learning engineer, they have different categories and jobs specific to that. And they're like a lot of Seattle-based companies. But with everybody working remote, that's still great to apply for because no one's going in any office anywhere. That's, you know, I get jobs that come up and they, it's from Texas or the people in somewhere else in the United States other than where I'm at, and they're all remote, even sometimes different countries. So you got that. Another one, um, there is a site called, particularly whether COVID or not, um, it's called remote. I have it here. I'm going to put it in here. Remote. Uh, there's one on uh, remote um, jobs, remote ML jobs. What's the site? It's called um, it's called remote ML. Here, I'm putting that in the, in the link also. I know I'm giving you a lot of different things, but remote ML is good. And here, I'm cutting it uh, CAC. I'm putting it in, in, the, in the chat down here because this remote ML are jobs globally, all over the world. The machine learning jobs. The There's one thing. called Angel List as well. They have uh, startup companies. Mm -hmm. What you do is go down when you have time. I know that's a lot I'm saying, but go and look at the job description, particularly the site remoteml.com, because it's no nonsense. It's straight machine learning jobs. Go look there and look at the job descriptions and just see what you match and see what you need to learn. Right. And this is not just like jobs that, like I say, sometimes, you know, you'll get a job with say data scientist and it's not a data scientist job. It's no, not even mentioned in there, anything. But this site right here, remote ML is really good because they're all remote. 
quite a few of them are short term, six months contracts, six months to a year, what have you, or longer. But it's jobs all over the world. It is real, you know, real machine learning jobs. And with the job description, just look at them and see how you measure up just to the job description. You know, can I do I know that? Do I know that? They tell you the technologies that they're using and what you would need to know. So that's a good thing to do too. And they even put the salaries in here. Like for instance, if you just go to the page, let me just show you guys quickly. Let me just share. I just share quickly here. Share, share my screen. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Can you see? Yes. Okay, like this one. This is just the front page. And here's a job right here. They tell you it's remote. It's in the USA, 150 to 175K a year. And they're telling you exactly what it is, you know, what they do. And then you can skip down to the requirements, right? You know, Python. That's how, obviously, right? And then you got TensorFlow, PyTorch. TensorFlow is a deep learning framework. So, um, you know, that, that's good to know. Data sheet, deep understanding data structure of and algorithms. Right, the algorithm part, those five I mentioned, learn those first, learn those. There's others, but those five I've seen and I work with data scientists, I do the, I'm a data scientist. I'm also a data engineer. I wear those hats. I work in, you know, I've done these things. They're going to, and I've been to quite a few interviews. Those five are what's going to be key, right? They, they, those five algorithms I mentioned are key. You got to know those. That's going to go a long way. You know, hackers mentality, beginner's mind. See, they want you to, you got to emphasize it. Look, I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to take it on. Here's my GitHub. Here's books I've read. Talk about that. You know, talk about, hey, I'm in the, the, the data science. I'm in this data science circle. I'm in that, in that meetup group. That goes a long way too, you know, because they show you're actively learning and it pays well, 150, 175K a year. I mean, come on, right? So this is a, a good gig. And so, yeah. You know? Thank you so much, Jermaine. This was really yeah. informative, and even your algorithms tip. That's really good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that that's let me stop sharing my screen, but yeah, that's that's a really good site. Oh, and I at the top, I don't know if you saw it, but it said at the top of the thing called Find a Machine Learning Mentor. If you go to Remote ML, click on that and see that'll help you too. You can chat with people like this and that'll help you out, you know, people globally all over the world. So it's wonderful. Um, just the last question, I think. We got time for this one, uh, Hanny? Yeah. Uh, okay. As far as everyone's uh, still on the call, um, we can cover this. It will be helpful for others as well. Okay. This one says, are Pandas scikit-learn use that production level? I heard there's point know about these packages, but really use in production. Once, I was, once some of the libraries once you learn to become that science engineer. No, that is Hanit. Hey, Hanit, how are you? Um, that, um, no, that, that, is, uh, no, these are used in production. Th these, these packages, libraries, they are the base. That's really what you're going to use. Like that, that's not accurate. They are used in production. That's what's being used. You got to use those. You're going to know Panda, NumPy, Scikit-Learn. That's what you're using. Um, you got to know that. I mean, of course, now you have, um, things like they, they have auto ML, which data bricks has one of different, some of the different machine learning frameworks have auto ML where you just put in like your data and it'll go through, clean it, fix it and do everything like that. AWS has that. It's called A2, it's called A2I, um, augmented artificial intelligence. I've, I use that currently. I've, I've used it currently, not in production, but we're played with it because we want to do possibly may go the direction of auto ML and that kind of thing, that kind of pipeline and, and use and get some labeling, ground truth for labeling AWS. So they have those frameworks out there, but you still have to know these things. You can't just rely on that. And they're not as widespread one because they're really expensive. So company is not going to say, you know, it's rare. I'm not going to say what they're not going to do, but you're going to get in the company, you're going to have these skills. And then on top of that, they're going to pay for AWS or Azure's auto ML and pay for that. It's, it's expensive to, to have that up, you know, because you pay by the usage and it's really intensive. If you ever build models, they could take hours, depending on data, they take hours and hours and hours. Then you didn't even talk about when you're doing, when you're building models, you know, or doing deep learning, you got to use GPUs. GPU sends the price through the roof 
to use GPUs, right? So, you know, you got to know these things. You, they they used in production, trust. I'm telling you, we use these on a daily basis. This, this is what we do. We use these things. We use NLP. We use, you know, and that's coding. That's pulling up a notebook, whether it's Anaconda or Go, Google Colab. You're pulling up a notebook. You got to know these things. Even when if you're using the auto ML stuff that I just talked about, you know, from AWS or Azure or Databricks, you know, you only, you're not going to know what's happening, even troubleshoot it to fix it if you don't know this. And you're not going to be able to really interpret the results because it's going to give you the results, but it's not going to tell you what the results mean. You got to know that. So, you know, so, uh, yeah. So I hope that answers you, honey. Then there's, uh, yeah, of course. Then another, how much do I need to prepare for algorithm? Is it okay to solve easy level problems at lead code? That's cool. You could do that, but I, like, I don't know. I've heard of it. I never went in. I don't, I don't, you know, use lead code much to do anything. So I can't really say to do that, but, um, there are, if you just go it, it, it to learn when you are saying the easy way to learn, it really depends on the time you have and how you learn. Like I use a combination of books and also videos because I can read like a chapter of a book. It may take me 30 minutes to get an understanding. I could watch a 15 minute video that spells it out on YouTube. So it really just depends. Use a combination of both to, to prepare about the algorithm. It ain't really much to prepare. Once you do one problem with an algorithm to solve it, you're good. If you have an understanding of it, as far as what is taking place, like you don't have to know so much the background math of it. That's why you got NumPy. It does that. But you have to have like a cursory understanding of matrices and vertices and just really the outcome and what's happening, explain what's going on in the code. Like, um, in, in my GitHub, and I have notebooks. And what I do is even with the books, I will type out the code, but I also paste the explanation of what they're saying in the notebook. So I can always refer back to it, right? And know step-by-step step what's happening. As long as you know that, you'll be able to explain it. So, you know, it, it, we don't want to make it complicated where it's like like you're trying to get a PhD, you know, your thesis paper, you know, we don't want to make it that. A couple hours a week, you know, maybe if you got time on the bus, well, nobody's taking the bus really going to work anymore. <laughs> but if you're home and you're able to at night, like an hour, just I wouldn't do more than an hour because especially if you're late and you like me, I'm a parent, you know, I got kids and stuff and my wife. So. I'm involved in my family, so I can't just sit like three, four hours and do that. Plus, your brain will mush up, you know, uh, you know, an hour, man, an hour. Even if you do 45 minutes and stop and stretch and move and do like an hour, I wouldn't do more than an hour a night and just, just look at the stuff, you know, just look at the, the algorithm in the book and go through the notebook and put in so you know how it's applied and then read the seed and understand of it. That's what it is. And you can pseudocode that in the interview. You can pseudocode that. Uh, what's happening when they tell you what are the steps that you got to do data exploration then you got to visualize the data then after you do that you got to normalize the data you know you gotta if if it's data because data science and all of these algorithms they don't like it's no words it's all numbers so you have to do things like one hot encoding you're going to hear that that's basically when you take a piece of information that's data that's a string and it's like maybe categories like categories of cars you know for ferrari you know, Mazda, and you can't say that and do, you have to change that into a number. So one hand encode it, encodes it. It gives each of those values a specific number. And then you can go through and do your, you know, stuff you need to do there. So um, I left my email. I think I put my GitHub in here so you all can look at. I gave you the link to z-lib.org, which has all these free, wonderful books. You can go out, just browse, type in the search and pull it up um donate to it too if you can you know a couple of dollars whatever I, I donate to it um because I, I just like them give them getting all these brand new free books <laughs> for free so that's great to do and um don't don't stress by it. i know it's tough because you're looking for work and it's like oh what's this guy talking about you know he's working no i've been not working too i've been fired i've been laid off i've been not with kids in the family to support i in my house my wife works from home i mean my wife doesn't work from my wife we made a decision. My wife was a professional like me, but when we had kids, she decided to stay home and we decided, made a decision to homeschool our kids and take care of our kids. So I'm the sole provider in my household and I've been laid off for months at a time. So I've no been there, done that. But my thing is, is that don't, I'm telling you from experience, not just talking crap. Don't focus on that. 
keep learning and improving your skills as you can daily and um just prepare for the interviews it's, it's no crack to it it's no no shortcut know your algorithms know those these libraries as much as you can know these algorithms learn how to apply them you know learn how to discuss how they solve a problem what's the problem we're trying to solve you know and then discuss that that that's going to take you you're going to find a job with no time doing that you are rather than trying to read the quick and easy i'm going to crack the amazon interview you're not going to crack the amazon interview they change it they change it often they know about that same with facebook same with and that's why they're so gracious they'll tell you what it is you need to know they'll give you weeks to prepare it i've done the interviews they'll give you weeks to prepare then they'll ask you what code you want to use, what you're comfortable with. Then they're going to ask you the questions and you're going to be able to knock them out the park because you did this. You know, they're going to be impressed. Then you're going to talk about how you on, you know, data science circles. You're, you're a member of that. You're going to have your GitHub. Those are the recipes for success. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is nice. Thanks for the link uh, for that. Yeah, this is, this is, this is, yeah, I'm just looking at this link that I was saying. Yeah, this is nice. This is nice. You know, um, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, so that's, that's, you know, I know we, uh, I think we're at time, right, Penny? Or? Yeah, we are almost on time. Okay, I could, you know, I could, I'm passionate. I could talk about this for hours, but <laughs> I know we, you know, for time's sake. But we would I, love I, I, to have you for another session as well if you you know um just uh, comment anyone who is interested uh jermaine speaking about any particular particular topic and we would love to have you jermaine this has been great thank you i, I appreciate you guys and you know i you know as i can I, I don't mind you know helping out and you know you got my github you guys uh, got uh i sent the zlob and you got my email and I'm on LinkedIn. My name is Jermaine Allgood. It, it, the best thing is LinkedIn. Just, you know, LinkedIn because it automatically pops up and tells me. And then we all can connect too on LinkedIn. So, and I'm connected with Hanny and, you know, just send me a, a request. I'll We connect and in, in the LinkedIn, you know, I, I'll put in some, you know, what I find or try to help you guys out. But, um, you know, I think this is great. We are network because I'm, I happen to be working now, but, you know, we all know how that can go, you know. We, we, I've been there, done that in the position where I wasn't and I'm looking for work. So at least we expanded our circle and, you know, we, we keep each other, you know, uh, lifted up and, and help each other. So, you know, thank y'all. Definitely. That's, that's the goal. Uh, I was trying to look for how do I uh, save this chat? Couldn't find it. Uh, oh. Does anyone know? Cause the, all the content that has been shared. Oh, I did find it, but unfortunately it, I just yeah. control A, control C, and copy them to a <laughs> Great. Okay. Because I joined through web browser and it won't allow me. So I'll do the same thing. I yeah, I think there's no way to do that. That's great. Thank you for that. Um, does any, I think we are on time, but. Um, Hope you all uh, uh, got answer and had uh, some or more uh, insight of what you're looking for that help, uh, you know, to uh, prep your interview. Jeremiah, again, it's been great. Uh, yes. Really appreciate. Last time I forgot to uh, record the session, but this time we have the recording. So in case if anyone's interested, we'll post that on uh, Data Circles. Um, youtube channel as well okay i'm just cutting and doing what he did control cut and pasting <laughs> and that's what i'm doing <laughs> yeah and then uh you know we could you could i don't know email it or st stick it uh you know send it to us honey or something and uh, yeah, yeah yeah okay that's um that um I'm not sure if I can send it to everyone, uh, so that's why please guys, guys uh, join us on the Slack channel. That's where we have a interview prep channel. You guys can join that channel, and then I'll be sharing all the content over there, and or and also whatever I've been I've been actively looking for those kind of content just to share. And then we have also have a job board where we usually share the job post. Um, so yeah, feel free to join us. Okay. Well, thank you all again. You all have a nice evening.